So it's supposed to get really spicy with the Microsoft Activision Blizzard deal as we know Microsoft has subpoenaed PlayStation to get more information from them. And that information has just continuously been pushed off and pushed off as Sony has asked for more time and they've been granted more time. And now it seems like that time is about to come to an end on February 10th. So this is a post here from IDAS who has been looking into this information. I believe IDAS is a lawyer, so kind of understands what is going on with a lot of the stuff involving this case and the different happenings, like when they're being subpoenaed and what this means and how long they're gonna have to do this. So he puts this post out here on Reset Error and says, Sony gets seven more days to serve the subpoena from Microsoft, but this time it wasn't completely agreed by Microsoft. The judge granted it, so new, and it sounds like it is the final deadline, which is gonna be February 10th. And that's next week. That's coming up, that's next Friday. So they have till the end of the week pretty much to go ahead and get this information to Microsoft. And we are gonna hopefully hear and see a lot of interesting things in the business workings of the video game industry because the information that they are just asking for here is 45 distinct document requests, 13 of which have multiple subparts for a total of 120 separate document requests, which is a ton of information that Sony is gonna have to get. It's gonna take them a lot of time and a lot of effort and money to be able to do this. In fact, it says that it estimates to provide this information, it's gonna cost approximately $2 million or more in fees and expenses and demands of weeks of intense work and substantial efforts from the SIE personnel. The requests demand all documents related to all aspects of SIE's businesses, as well as extensive sets of sales, financial, and personal user data. And they're getting this information, I think, kind of to prove, hey, look, PlayStation, Sony, they don't need Call of Duty. They are completely doing extremely well within the gaming industry. I mean, we just recently saw their quarterly financials, which I think is going to hurt Sony more than anything at the end of the day, just kind of proving that they are thriving right now, especially with selling the individual console. Now, we know that selling the individual console, I, I still... 100% believe isn't going to be the way forward for the video game industry. It isn't the way that you're going to make the most amount of money. The way that you're going to be making the most amount of money is users, active users in your ecosystem, spending money, all of that type of stuff. And that's where Xbox sees this industry going. I think that is going to be the correct direction for companies to be on top. Sony has fallen behind in that sense. And they, and they realize that if this deal does go through, they're going to be even further behind. And at some point they're going to have to adjust to really push their monthly active user stuff their just overall active users within their ecosystem and their subscription but hey i could be wrong but that's just the way i see it but as of right now in terms of the specific console sales and what sony is doing they're doing a phenomenal job with the playstation 5. so this deal will have huge effects on that side of things but we'll see some of these documents if they come out to the public in terms of just the amount of money they've been able to make with PlayStation just how successful they've been. It says here that 10 of these requests seek materials going back more than 11 years to January 2012. So going all the way back to just to the end, I guess, of the PlayStation 3 generation, just before the PlayStation 4 launch, because I believe that launched in 2013. They want to, they're requesting documents related to performance reviews and evaluations of all Sony gaming leadership or management all documents relating to SIE's gaming business sent to, received from, or exchanged with, with other Sony entities, and executed copies of every content licensing agreement SIE has entered into with any third-party publisher over the past 11 years, among others. Now, I think that's going to be the most interesting thing out of all of this, the third-party publisher agreements that SIE has entered into. I mean, we know there have been tons all of the timed exclusivity stuff and just third party exclusives to PlayStation. It'll be very interesting to see. What I'm most interested in, in all of this stuff is the Square Enix stuff with stuff like Final Fantasy 16 and just some of these games that it's just been so weird how Square Enix, they're just a weird company in the way that they operate with the releases of their games. Like some games come out for timed exclusive on PlayStation and then come out later on PC. But then you have games that just 
come out on PlayStation and on Nintendo and then just completely skip Xbox. So it'll be really interesting to see if Sony had a rule to play any of that type of stuff, keeping some of these games off of Xbox. Because Square Enix at the same time has also put tons of games into Xbox Game Pass and have put some games that you wouldn't expect onto the Xbox platform. So there's, I feel like there's something in there that we may get some more information. I really want to know what is going on with Square Enix and Xbox, what the relationship is, is it not good? And are these deals having any effect on some of the games that Square Enix gets to publish on the Xbox platform? Continues here and says, Sony is not happy with the unrealistically short deadlines and irrelevant requests from Microsoft. In any case, Sony anticipates that this will be the last request for an extension to the motion to quash deadline and that they will either reach final agreement or narrow any impasse by February 10th, 2023. Microsoft disagrees with the relief request in this motion. So hopefully February 10th, this all happens. The documents have to come out and we see some stuff. Like we've been seeing a lot of things, a lot of inner workings of the gaming industry, of some of the deals that go on behind the scenes, how everything is really working. That's been the most eye-opening thing when it comes to the Activision Blizzard stuff. Just being able to really see something. If this deal hadn't been happening, we, we probably would have never saw. But we'll see what happens by the end of the week and if Sony complies and gets these documents out. But that's it for me, guys. Let me know what you think about all of this stuff. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. I'll catch you in the next video.